uh, there's uh, another, I think, very, very important story that is really getting no attention, and it kind of goes into what I've covered on the road and status quo is covered on the roll, road, and it's not sexy, and the media doesn't care for the most part, but there's kind of like a not-so-quiet water crisis in America. Here's The Guardian. A hidden scandal. America's school students exposed to water tainted by toxic lead. Elevated levels of lead have been found in schools across the U.S., alarming experts who say it is particularly harmful to children. And by the way, this is a message I do not hear any presidential candidate talking about. This is a national emergency. This is the national emergency. Not a border wall. Not Russian trolls. Our kids are drinking lead. They're not only drinking lead, but there's, there's uh, PFAS, which is a cancer-causing chemical being found in drinking water across the country. You have TTHMs, which was found in Flint, another cancer-causing chemical. I mean, there's a lot of chemicals and bacteria being found in water that are getting very, very little attention. So I'm going to read you a little bit about this. When Shakima Thomas came home from her job as a Newark, New Jersey social worker in October 2018, she found a paper wedged in her door. The notice said her water could be contaminated with lead. Officials first found lead in school water fountains and taps nearly two years earlier. Contaminations in homes was revealed by environmentalists as it became apparent Newark's corrosive water contributed to lead leaching from plumbing into people's water. Quote, my kids loves water. My kid loves water. He loves it. So it's difficult telling him not to drink the water, said Thomas, about her son Bryce. He's four years old and doesn't understand. In a century-long war to remove lead from Americans' daily lives, water remains the outlier, overlooked by some of the same public health experts and scientists who battled to get heavy metals out of food, paint, and gasoline. Unfortunately, it's a problem that was swept under the rug for many years, even though many experts were well aware there was an excess of lead in their tap water, said Eric Olson, a senior, senior director of advocacy at the Natural Resources Defense Council, about lead in schools in particular. Howard Kessler, a retired doctor based in Tallahassee, Florida, who is part of Physicians for Social Responsibility, said, Parents didn't know about this issue, but it's bubbling up now and many of them are concerned. Lead is a neurotoxin. It drops IQ scores. It's linked to uh, aberrant behavior and violence. The concern is that while we are not taking much action, children are being damaged on a generational level. We are supposed to provide them with a safe environment, not poison them. We are going to spend millions of dollars on security guards to protect students from gun violence, but we aren't properly protecting their brain health from lead and water. And by the way, it's not just their brain health. Lead stunts your bone development, your muscles. I mean, pretty much every system you could think of, your, your um, nervous system, your lymph, your lymph system, endocrine system. I mean, lead wreaks havoc on just about every system within your body. Uh, lead is not an issue specific to New Jersey. Elevated, le elevated lead levels have been found in schools across the U.S. in the wake of the toxic water scandal that is Royal Flint. The widespread contamination has alarmed experts who point out that lead, linked to developmental and behavioral problems, is particularly harmful to children. High levels of lead exposure can lead to anemia, damaged hearing and speech, and headaches. Low levels can impair a child's IQ, academic achievement, and ability to pay attention. There are more insidious effects researchers are still working to document. U.S. studies have shown lead-exposed children are more likely to be aggressive, leading to bullying, truancy, and even jail. Lead, not just in water, continues to ravage many U.S. cities. In Cleveland, Ohio, some neighborhoods struggle with lead exposure, impacting up to 25% of children. And, if you recall, Status Quo was the only national media at Cleveland's City Hall during a press conference to announce that 92 children were found with high lead levels in one month in Cleveland since the beginning of 2019. 92 children. They had that press conference on the same day Trump declared a fake national emergency. We were the only national media there. Only other person I saw was somebody from the Cleveland Plain Dealer. That was it. So nearly 100 children, high lead levels in a month. Eh, you know, why cover that? This is why status quo exists. Our national corporate media doesn't give a wild buck about children, about working people, about the proletariat, about public health, about public safety, about integrity, about ethics. Ooh, this is fun. I could go on. 
I mean, what is more important? I don't want to be like children or future, but what is more important than children? What is more important? Not just because, you know, parents love your children. Aunts and uncles love your children. Grandparents love your children. But this is our future. This is our future economy. These are our future teachers. These are our future police officers, our future firefighters, our, our, our future everything. So if children from Cleveland to Flint to Milwaukee to Baltimore to Pittsburgh to, um, I mean, there's so many other places. Now Utah, Ohio has had water problems, Massachusetts, Newark. You, and when, by the way, there's not nationwide testing going on in these cities. There's not. Cleveland, which found 92 children had high lead levels in a month, over 50% of the children have not been tested. And guess what? They're majority black. Cleveland is a 53% African-American city. Flint, overwhelmingly African-American. Well, not overwhelmingly, but 50, 70%? 57%? Detroit has a lead problem. Overwhelmingly African-American. Baltimore, I mean, the list goes on. But it's also coming to white areas, too. Life does not discriminate because this, in wealthier areas, they change the plumbing, they change the pipes, they do lead abatement in the homes to get rid of that old lead-based paint. But in Cleveland, and places like it, you have a lot of old housing stock. So they're not in such a rush. Not in such a rush to fix those things there. This is kind of that institutional racism Joe Biden was talking about. Extensive evidence of lead in school water has been found across America. More than half the public schools in Atlanta were found to have high levels of lead. In some cases, 15 times above the federal limit for water systems. Schools in Baltimore, Portland, and Chicago were all found to have significant amounts of lead in drinking water. The most startling problems arose in Detroit, where the school district shut off water in all 106 school buildings last year. A total of 57 Detroit schools tested positive for lead, copper, or both. Students were told to switch to bottled water. The city is now looking to spend $2 million on new filters and water fountains. This is another thing. They just toss filters at the problems. They need to redo the pipes. Filters don't fix the problem. Filters go bad. Filters are flimsy. Filters don't even protect against bacteria. And filters do not protect if lead is above a certain level. Trust me, the residents of Flint could give you a master's course on the problems with these filters that they hand out. Communities outside major urban areas haven't escaped the taint of lead. Two dozen schools and daycare centers in Maine were found to have high levels of lead, while authorities in Vermont have vowed to test more of its schools after a report found 16 of its schools has lead contamination. For residents of Newark, the water crisis means a burden they can barely bear. It took Thomas, who relies on public transportation, almost two weeks to get a water filter after a computer erroneously showed she'd already received one. Quote, it's really unfair and I think it's sad, said Thomas. Kids have to go to school with the water being toxic and they have to come home and the water is toxic. I just think it's poor leadership. Now Newark's teachers are leading the charge to get the heavy metal out of drinking water, suing the city and notifying people like Thomas where to pick up water filters. For Yvette Jordan, one of the named plaintiffs in a lawsuit against the city of Newark and a public school history teacher, it meant instructing her students they could no longer drink from fountains and why they needed to walk across campus cup in hand to quench their thirst. Quote, there wasn't the public outcry because people were so overloaded with the uh, vicissitudes of life. I've never heard that word. Vicissitudes of life, she said. The reaction was, quote, I got to worry about water too. Are you kidding me? When Thomas found the notice stuffed in her door jam, she was likely unaware of a 1988 law, the Lead Contamination and Control Act signed by Ronald Reagan nearly 30 years to the day before she found that slip of paper was, was meant to prevent this. In the U.S., lead was nearly phased out of gasoline and paint by the mid-1980s. This alone was a huge public health victory, years in the making, and which showed nearly immediate benefits. The LCCA was meant to further these public health laws by requiring schools and daycares to test for lead and water. Pioneering researchers such, such as Herbert Needleman, whose work was inspired 
inspired by the playground his North Philadelphia clinic overlooked were able to show low level lead exposure in children caused permanent brain damage, behavioral problems, and developmental delays. Scientists turned advocates such as MacArthur Foundation's Genius Award winner Ellen Silbergeld used this research and her own to catalyze politicians to amend lead-related policy. Quote, when we took lead out of gasoline, the blood lead of Americans went down by 80 percent, said Sild uh, Silberge Silbergeld, about the blood tests typically used to measure lead circulating in the body. At the time, she was working for the Environmental Defense Fund with a team of researchers and advocates. It turned out the contribution from lead and gasoline was huge and much bigger than many of us thought. Silbergeld, who also worked to remove human toxins such as mercury and dioxines from the environment, said, In my life, working on environmental problems, I've never seen anything like it. Within three months, you saw the results. That's astounding. After removing lead from the welds of tin cans, gasoline, and paint, it was almost like, hey, we've solved this, she said. We were really overlooking the potential for lead in drinking water. Although the quality of water in Flint is approving, not true, residents are still concerned about it. Water distribution sites are continuing. For the last several Saturdays, there's been free water distribution at Prince of Peace Church. Saturday's, Saturday's event was also sponsored by the Pack Your Back group. Organizers are urging families who need clean water to attend these distributions. You know Flint needs help, and we want to continue to help our residents here, and the sooner the better. We're going on five years, and five years is way too long. Next Saturday will be the last time water is scheduled to be distributed at the church. Well, got to call it out. New, new Michigan governor, Gretchen Whitmer, who is a Democrat, she said she was going to reestablish the free water pods, which were closed down by Governor Rick Snyder, who frankly should be in jail. Um, she said she was going to reestablish it. It's been, she's been in office now full two months. I don't know what's happening with that. So I'm going to reach out to her office this week. But key, key here. It is March 10th. April 25th is five years since Flint had clean water. I'm silent because I want that to sink in. It's been five years since a United States city has had access to clean water. And as you know, both when I was at the Young Turks and now at Status Quo, I've been to Flint 13 times. I would not tell you that they're lying unless I had enough evidence and I had enough research and I had enough interviews and I had enough observation to tell you they are lying. The levels might be improving, but they don't, we don't know if the levels are under the allowable limit that the EPA sets. And by the way, the EPA's allowable limit for lead is based not on public health, but based on a measure of corrosion control. In November, we broke, Jen and I, status quo, broke a massive story showing that the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, the same Michigan Department of Environmental Quality that caused the water crisis in the first place by failing to add the proper corrosion control chemicals to the Flint River when the city was switched from the Detroit water system to the Flint River, they cooked the data. If you never read the story, it was a huge story we broke. We were supposed to break it for Newsweek, but they were cowards and they backed out at the last minute, so we self-published. Jen and I combined knocked on 450 doors last summer and this most recent fall. We found that the state of Michigan, the environmental agency, literally were both going into residents' homes who were on the official state testing program and flushing their water before collecting the samples. So turning on the tap, letting it run, in some cases for 30 seconds to a minute, in some cases for several minutes, in some cases for 10 to 15 minutes. They were letting the water run and then putting the sample bottle under, which is illegal. It is against the EPA's lead and copper rule. It artificially lowers the levels, so you get a level that is under the 15 parts per billion that the EPA mandates. 
we had dozens of residents recount that this occurred in their homes, both state officials going in and doing it, and in other cases, state officials not doing it themselves, but verbally telling the residents, flush your water, run your water before you take the testing. This is one of the biggest environmental scandals, probably the 21st century. They literally cooked the testing and the data to get lower levels. This has not been even argued. The state of Michigan didn't even argue our findings because they can't. It's true. We have paperwork to back it up. We have overwhelming number of interviews with residents where this happened. Their response to us was the residents are confused. We met in person. I never revealed it, but I'm going to reveal it now. We met in person. I won't reveal who, but we met in person with one of the top, yeah, one of the top five officials in the state of Michigan in, uh, when was it? February. In Michigan. We had a meeting with that individual and that person's team. Haven't heard back from, but they were looking into it, our findings. So they said, so we have a corporate media that does not cover this issue. We have a corporate media that even though Congressman Ro Khanna came out, there needs to be an investigation. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard came out. There needs to be an investigation based on what status quo found. Susan Sarandon, Alyssa Milano, Sean King. Uh, I mean, the list goes on of people that came out on this story. Nothing has happened. You want to know why? Because our politicians do not care. Do not care about the people of Flint, they care when it's in vogue to care. They care and the pundits care when like a comedian at the White House Correspondents' Dinner says like uh, at the end of her speech, Flint has no clean water. And then everybody's Flint warriors on Twitter for five minutes and then they go back to Trump's tweets. We care. Status quo cares. We've been consistent. If I could go to Flint every week, I'd go to Flint every week because this isn't only about water. Flint is not only about the water. These other cities aren't about the water. This is about, do we live in a country where people, where, where our politicians represent the people and protect the people? Or do we live in a country where the politicians poison the people and then leave them to die? Because that's what's happening in Flint. And you will see that when our documentary comes out. And right now we're shooting to release that documentary in April for that five-year anniversary. You will see what we're talking about. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.